Good evening and welcome to the June 3rd, 2015 Board of Education meeting. We are in executive session from 6 to 6.30 to discuss a contractual negotiation of individual personnel, personnel contracts. And then at 6.30 we uh, enjoyed a nice reception for uh, staff that will be get, receiving tenure tonight. Uh, we'll start with the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right, do we have any participation in government students here this evening? Okay. Um, your requirement is that if the meeting goes until 9 o'clock, we'll take a break at 9 o'clock. You'll need to then come up and sign out. We'll have sign-out sheets up here. And if you need anything signed from a board member, we'll be here to do that. If the meeting gets done before 9, then you'll come up at that time. Uh, with introductions? Michael Cooper. Christine Beck. Diane Stever. Jody Monroe. Tom Douglas. Matt Downey. Charmaine Widgesinger. Joanne Cunningham. Lynn Lenhart. And Judy Kehoe. Okay. Uh, next item on the agenda, number two, approval of the minutes of the May 20th, 20, 20, 2015 regular board meeting. So moved. Second. That's a first and a second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? That item carries. Uh, do we have a representative from the Student Senate here this evening? Okay. If you can come up to the microphone. Hi, I'm Emily Bowden from. You can take it out. You can take it right out. From the Student Senate, and um, you can. Oh, okay, right. I'm sitting here by Gabby and Chelsea. I'm a current senator, and I'll be next year's secretary. And um, so our agenda was uh, May May 8th. We had Mr. Our Mr. Bethlehem Beauty Pageant. Um, on May 27th, we had our. Uh, blood drive and May 8th we had our elections for next year senators and officers um, this week June 1st through June 5th we have and are having our um, dodgeball tournament and we had 2019 signed up Great. Okay. anyone any questions who's, who's a new president a new president is Ellie Bell vice president um, Elena Kreinberg okay. Congratulations, congratulations to all the new yeah. officers Thank you. Thank you. Next, we'll have the superintendent's report. But before we do that, I'd ask that we have a, a motion to, agend, to amend the agenda and move up item eight so we can take action on that. So moved. Second. First and second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? That item carries. So we'll vote on number eight. Um, it is recommended that the Board of Education approve the following finance action items A through B. So moved. So That's the first and a second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Uh, that item carries. Oh, I'm sorry. Can I have a, <laughs> can okay. someone we'll point done. that out to me? All right, can I have a motion to move item <laughs> number <laughs> nine? So move. So move. Second. First second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Now, it is recommended that the Board of Education approve the following instructional staff action items A through M. So moved. Second. First and second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? I dissent. Okay. Um, that passes 6-1. And now we'll go to the superintendent's report. Uh, thank you, President Downey. Um, it's sort of the typical start to the end of the year. So there are many activities and act, um, events that are going on in all of our schools, and we're going to try to make sure in the updates, please please uh, take time to read them. Uh, and if you would like to attend anything, you're obviously welcome to show up. But if you want, also, please contact Brittany Barrett so that she has that, and she'll make sure she reaches out to all the principals who are here tonight, because I know they've got many special activities planned. Uh, additionally, we have uh, our musical spectacular for the end of the year, the Spectrum Concert, which is tomorrow night. Uh, I believe it's at 7.30. And is our, our music supervisor, Dave Norman, is here. And also I want to, you know, on behalf of the board and myself, 
thank you for providing the music for this evening as well. It's very much appreciated. <laughs> Additionally, we ha have many um, events that lead up to graduation. I know that we try to give a regular reminder that several years ago, students that are seniors now are responsible to get them, get their own way to the SEFQ Center, um, and I'm sure the high school principal will take care of that, but I know we announced that uh, to make sure that we're there. Plenty of time to make sure that the graduation goes off as it usually does without a hitch. So uh, in regards to what's going on in the political scene, we have a new commissioner of education, Mary Ellen Eli, uh, who is our new commissioner who will be starting on July 6th. Uh, she's been doing a lot of uh, special presentations in the meantime. Uh, as she transitions to the area, we are going to be writing a letter asking her, as well as our region, Finn, if they'd like to visit the district uh, as well as part of her new tour, whether it's over the summer just to get her feet wet uh, or at the start of the school year as she would be locally very close by. I do not know if the next commissioner is going to live in Del Mar, but we'll extend that <laughs> olive branch as well. Uh, in, in regards to the political action, there are several things happening over the next couple of weeks as the legislative session uh, comes to an end. What's going to happen, we really don't know, but that's the surprising unknown thing is we're really worried about what will happen too. Uh, although we cannot necessarily take uh, positions on certain uh, items that are before, we have communicated out to our PTAs, PTOs, and boosters certain positions that we feel would be in the best interest of public education and if they could do so on our behalf. And we are hearing that through those communications, many of our state legislators are hearing the call in regards to some educational issues such as the educational investment tax credit that's been repackaged as well as the APPR uh, and some of the funding uh, ties to the APPR and removal of funding. So those are things and I'm sure Lynn can probably comment some on what NISBA is doing as well because I think everybody's really sensitive to what's going to happen in the next couple of weeks. Well, everybody's gearing up and, and, and I hope that, you know, when NISBA sends out those advocacy alerts that people are actually yep. filling it's very easy to send a letter and, um, it, you know, it's basically composed <clears throat> for you and just I, I think the more they receive, the better off we are um, in terms of our individual legislators. I'm not sure, you know, of others around the state. Yeah. Like, I, I can tell you doing. also, if, if by chance you definitely know your legislator's position, please make sure if it's in line with your position that you thank them. Right now, they do not really get many thank yous. And for both of our legislators right now, Assemblywoman Fahey and Senator Breslin, they have been pretty much very good supporters of public education. But we still always need to remind them, as well as everyone else, what our positions are to try to maintain public education. So that's my report. The re last part of my report is actually the recognition of the tenured teachers and administrators and staff for this evening. I'm going to ask Ms. Monroe to read the names. I'll take position there, and if the board can form a receiving line. <coughs> No, I've been here 10 years and I still don't have an eagle pen. Uh, I know, one of these days. <laughs> Uh, good evening, everyone. Uh, it's really, this is a great night. Uh, tonight we have our tenure reception and our, our next meeting we have our retirees reception. And all of our teachers and administrators go through a pretty rigorous evaluation process here in the district. Tonight is uh, a really special in that we have both teachers and administrators receiving tenure. And we have, um, you know, we had a rough budget process for several years. And a couple of the individuals receiving tenure actually were impacted by those budget reductions and came back uh, eventually as the budget got better and are receiving tenure this evening. So um, without further ado, I'd like to congratulate everyone. And I'll start with Andy Baker. Yeah, yeah. 
Yes. Andy Baker is receiving tenure as our ELA supervisor, K-12. This is his third tenure in the district, first as a teacher and then as an administrative dean. So we're happy to have Andy continue with us. Uh, next, I'd like to recognize Heather Coleman, who's receiving tenure as an assistant principal at the high school. This is only her first tenure with us, but we won't knock her for that. Uh, next, I'd like to recognize Laura Feinberg, who's receiving tenure as a special education teacher here in the district and works at our elementary schools. And our next supervisor who, who received tenure this year is Jennifer Gagne. She is our K-12 Science and Technology Supervisor. This is Jen's second tenure with us. She actually was a middle school science teacher for a number of years uh, before she left and then returned to Bethlehem. So thankfully, she's here with us. Uh, next, I'd like to recognize Christopher Holliday who is an English teacher at the middle school receiving tenure. Chris was one of the individuals impacted by the budget, and we were lucky enough to get him back. And he's done a great job, and congratulations to Chris. Uh, next up is Mr. Scott Landry, who is getting tenure as the high school principal. He also received tenure with us in a prior lifetime is uh, the assistant principal. So congratulations, Mr. Landry. Yeah. Two. Next, uh, we have Caitlin Lehman, who is receiving tenure as a math teacher. She has worked at the middle and high school uh, and was also one of the individuals who was impacted by the budget process, but we're thankfully uh, lucky to have her back. And I also want to recognize two individuals who could not be here uh, with us this evening but did receive tenure during the course of this year, uh, Kara Harrington and Meg Wyansky. Kara Harrington received tenure as a school psychologist, and Meg Wyansky received tenure as a CSE chairperson for middle school and Glenmont. So again, congratulations to all of our tenure recipients. Uh, we're re very lucky to have all of you in the district. And that concludes our uh, section of the board agenda. Next is the Board of Education report. Um, I guess I'll start with, um, I was able to attend the Senior Awards Night uh, last week, and it was a great event. Uh, really, uh, to congratulate the students that won the various prizes uh, and the parents who have always been there to support them, but really for the community. I mean, every week just about we take donations here from various entities, and to see the amount of support from the community and foundations and even individuals that have businesses in the area that donate 
uh, so that these students can be recognized for various reasons and, and give monetary awards to them. It, it was great. It really was a, a nice event. So. And then also last night I had a special opportunity to volunteer at the middle school garden. Uh, for anyone who isn't aware, Tuesday night is community night at the middle school garden. I would encourage anyone to go and help out from 6 to 7.30. Uh, Mr. Warford's there and uh, he's willing to and uh, would like anyone's help. Uh, it, was, it was a great time and uh, he actually gave me a couple bags of lettuce and I had a great salad because of that. So. Uh, but they've been doing a great job there. Uh, if you have a chance Saturday, if you go to the farmer's market, walk them back and uh, check it out. Uh, there are tons of uh, vegetables already coming up and flowers and, and everything. So uh, good job there. And I would encourage anyone throughout the whole summer, Tuesday nights, if you have free time and want to uh, just get outside from 6 to 7.30, they're there. Okay. I think anyone? they're also looking for like summer or garden help, like people to take a week uh, is, is he still here? I guess not. No, Mark. Uh, yeah, 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 Mark. Yeah. You need people to take the garden over for a week during the summer or to care for it or something? Do you want to? At this point right now, I think um, Swearlands has received funding for a garden, so every school in the district now has a functioning garden, mm -hmm. and each one has a different structure in terms of how they need support. I do know some gardens have families to take it over for a week and pick from there. At the middle school, I'm there every Tuesday night and mm -hmm. meet people and work. But uh, anyone that's interested in a garden at your school should contact the school principal and they'll put you on a hunt and they'll shovel your name on it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Anyone Gee, while you were at the garden, we had an <laughs> audit committee meeting. <laughs> <laughs> I'd like to have been at the garden. I, yeah, I was going to say, I'm glad I was at the garden. <laughs> it was a lot of fun. <laughs> Um, I don't know, Christine, you want to talk about it because you're chair. But. Oh, uh, we Just met last night for about, what, two and a half hours, two hours, to talk about some auditing observations that we received regarding um, classroom funding. And uh, we talked to the administration. They're going to look into um, possibly posting um, some guidelines for extracurricular activities um, going forward for next year so that parents or anybody who's chairing the committees um, will have good guidance on that. And uh, do you have anything else to add? Well, just uh, the pre it was a pre-audit meeting. Our, our external auditors were yep. here and um, explained what they're going to be going through. And they're going to be here in June and, and August before they actually meet with us in September, which is our next meeting. Yep, September, September 22nd. 22nd. And if I may add also, once that audit is complete, the district will <laughs> then go through an RFP process because it's the end of the five-year term. Uh, at this point. It doesn't rule out the audit company from continuing. It's just that way we meet the OSC mm -hmm. guidance, guidance for trying to make sure we do the best for the public. Mm -hmm. okay. um, I, I, good? Yeah. Uh, okay, yeah. Uh, um, I know, I think Lynn, I'm not sure if Lynn was there. Um, we attended, Tom and I, at the uh, Ellesmere Senior Assembly. Was anybody else there? No, no. I couldn't. It's where uh, the graduating seniors go back to the elementary school and have an assembly with the entire school, and they uh, run out and high five all the kids, and they I, I recognize them. It's, it's really a special event. I think it was a, a lovely community gathering, and I know the little kids look up to the, I mean, physically, but also uh, <laughs> emotionally and um, just kind of um, developmentally look up to those older kids and envision who they might be in the years to come going through Bethlehem. So that your, was lovely. Your son was there, right? My son was there. As mm -hmm. senior. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And, and the other thing is, um, last week I was at the National Conference on Race and Ethnicity in American Higher Ed. It's a conference I go to um, every year, and I'm usually uh, lecturing there. But I also went to a keynote by a woman named Rosa Clemente, who describes herself as a community organizer, journalist, and hip-hop activist who lives in Los Angeles. And um, one thing I didn't know about her was uh, she, in 2008, ran for the, a Green Party ticket as vice president with a, a woman, Congresswoman Cynthia McKinney, and they were the first ever woman of color president VP ticket in the United States history, which I didn't know. But she, um, she graduated from SUNY Albany Magna Cum Laude, and she's finishing her doctorate at UMass Amherst. And over the course of her remarks, and she commented on lots of different things, one of the things she talked about was the nature of education. Again, this was a higher ed conference, and um, so she was talking about higher education. But what struck me was she was talking about when we refer to education um, along the lines of the goal is to get a career, the goal is to, um, to make a good living, uh, education can be seen as a commodity and commercialized. 
And that made me think a bit about K through 12 education and that when we talk about career and college ready a lot here, we obviously want to prepare kids to uh, pursue dreams and goals, but also I hope in addition to college and career ready, we're preparing them for life and to be good citizens. Because it did strike a, strike a chord with me when she was saying if, if we're really basically preparing people to be consumers um, because we want them to produce and contribute economically, is that really the function of education? Which got me thinking. Um, so she's published a lot. You can always look her up. And um, it made me think about what's education, the purpose, and what forces shape the goals of education. So it got me thinking in a larger context. So that's it. Anyone else? Um, I too was at the audit committee meeting and just want to say for the public, uh, you know, obviously you'll, the, we'll report on the, you know, final results of the audit, but um, it made me very proud to be part of a school district that really does a lot of hard work and due diligence um, in kind of peeling back the layers of um, of financial information, looking behind, and most importantly, looking at the processes that are in place that really drive um, much of what the outcome of the audit is. You know, if you have good checks and balances in place. Um, so I want the public to know, you know, this is a real blockbuster school district. And Tom, I really commend you and Judy um, for your leadership on this. But I mean, really, really good discussion and a lot of knowledge and most of all, a lot of due diligence. So um, just on that, and um, I went to the musical or the music concert at the middle school last night, um, which is why I wasn't at the fun garden event. Um, <laughs> but the musical at the um, at the, or the concert at the middle school was fantastic. And I know we have the spectrum tomorrow and I'm really looking forward to it. And it is, I mean, we should charge admission for it. It's so good. Um, but the middle school one last night was just dazzling. I mean, to see these young middle school musicians and they are preparing for what will be produced, you know, at the Spectrum concert. So it's just nice to see sort of the beginning of their musical careers. I mean, for many of them, you know, they've been playing at their elementary concerts. I went to one of those at Hammergrell the week before. Um, so it's just, I, I don't think we talk enough about the musical program here at Bethlehem, but it really is just spectacular. And, um, and for folks who've never been to Spectrum, last year was my first year, and it is a wow. Um, but the middle school one was a wow also. <laughs> um, and just a uh, some notes on some athletic um, um, great news um, that I received from our wonderful AD who's here with us tonight, Len Keyes. Um, a couple of highlights um, at this time of the year. It's great to hear that all spring sports earned scholar athlete team status, um, which means every single player on the team had 90 and above GPA. That's pretty remarkable. Um, speaks volumes about the standards we have at Bethlehem. Special congratulations to um, Teddy DiMaria, who was our Section 2 pole vault champion. I don't know if we mentioned that before, but oh, if yeah. we did, it's worth mentioning again. And also uh, Grace Smith, who is our high jump champ uh, for section two. Um, and also congrats to our unified basketball team on their third place tournament finish, which is also fantastic and was a great event. And we talked about that at a prior board meeting. And I can't believe Charmaine didn't mention it, but good luck to our track and field athletes um, this weekend who are participating in the state, state, uh, qualifier, state qualifier meet. So. Mm -hmm. um, so I will do that on behalf of your son and the other great tra track and field. So that's it for me. And I, can I ask, are we going to recognize spring athletes? I know it gets tight at the end of the year because there are several actually young people. I'm, I am driving four um, relay runners to North Carolina to go to the New Balance National <laughs> Tournament. I told them I would do it if they made it. But there are several young women going also. So uh, at some point it would be nice to uh, acknowledge them. They've made times. and. Uh, so, I have, um, yes. this weekend they had the Crucible performances. Mm -hmm. um, they did three shows: two on Saturday, one on Sunday, and it was just excellent. The whole the whole performance production was amazing. The kids are extremely talented. They did it in a two month period. I didn't think they could pull it off, but if they forgot a line, I didn't know. So, 
And thank you to the district, because this happened before I was here too, um, for restoring the funds to, if I get this right, BG, BJCT, is that right? Vincent, Vincent J. J. Crummel. Yes, theater group. Theater. So it's fabulous, so thank you. And I also attended the awards ceremony with Matt on, um, was it Thursday? Thursday. Thursday. And it was such a great event to acknowledge the students there that got these tremendous awards, worked so hard to be recognized for their four years at Bethlehem, and also those students who got 95 and above achievement, which is amazing. So it was great. You know, one of the problems at this time of year, there are just so many conflicts. I would love to have been at the awards assembly on Thursday at four other places to be at. And I, well, I was only at one, but. Um, let me ask you, they, they down Long Island, but it makes it very difficult sometimes to be able to attend all these things, and yeah. and, and these are just such wonderful times. And even this Thursday, at the same time as the Spectrum concert, which I'd love to be at, there's also the SEM advisory group. Is Jen still here? Yeah, mm -hmm. you know, um, is meet is meeting at, at seven to get pu public input on our STEM program here at Bethlehem. You know, there's so many conflicts of things going on at the same time, so. Um, it's tough, and actually I have to be someplace else, so I can't do either of those that I want. <laughs> Let me, I want to either ask Lynn or Jody, I know that the students um, who have like 95 or above <clears throat> at the award summary receive some kind of little medal. Are they supposed to wear that? Like at command, I wonder what they do with it. Do they wear that to command? Don't they get a tassel? They just have it? An extra tassel? Yeah, a cord. They get a yeah, cord. cord. They get a cord. I mean, they could wear it. Yeah, they got, put it they on. got like a little medal. Yeah, they can. they can wear it. Okay, I don't, I don't yeah, they know. got a medal. Yeah, they put. A they got a medal, right? When yeah. they had that night, yeah. I guess they could wear it, but they do get a cord. They get a cord. Okay. Mm -hmm. I'm hoping they're wearing their eagle pins if they received them too on their oh. gowns. So. Okay. <laughs> I've never seen that. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe they'll put it on their cap. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And they decorate their caps differently. Mm -hmm. Not with eagles. All right. Uh, moving on, we go into our item number six: presentations. Uh, first, we're going to have the Bethlehem Central um, Food Service update by Miss Alyssa Iser, our food director. I you know we're all looking forward to this. Good evening, everybody. Um, so this is my first time up here with you guys uh, since August when I came on board. So I'll just reintroduce myself. My name is Elisa Iser. Uh, I am a registered dietitian and I am the food service director for the school district. And I'm here to present an update on what's been going on this year with food services. Um, first off, I just wanted to go over um, a few things that are new for us in this school year. Uh, we just got done in early May with a New York State Ed administrative review. So they come in and they look at what we're doing as far as menu planning, make sure we're in accordance with USDA um, Healthy Hungry Free Kids Act guidelines, uh, which are now, which are growing every year it seems. They're just more and more. So um, our administrative review, uh, we don't have, it's complete. We don't have an official report back from them yet, but we did uh, get, have an exit conference and in that conference, um, that they were told us that we had a few items just that were for corrective action, nothing major. Overall, they were very impressed with our program. Um, could tell that we had done a lot of work this year to get ready for it, so they were really quite impressed with that. Um, we also had a financial review um, tacked on to this, and the one piece that they wanted us to do, as you all know, our high school program is off the National School Lunch Program. Um, they want us to separate the financial um, allocations of money for the K-8 program from the high school program. So we will be working on that um, early this summer and implementing for next school year in 15-16. Um, we have new USDA regulations. Just briefly, um, you did get a handout in the packet about the Smart Snacks regulation. That went into effect this school year. Our K-8 program, um, I reviewed their a la carte offerings when I came on board, so we're in accordance with that already. Uh, there are professional development uh, requirements that are going into effect in July, so next school year, for uh, what the food service director has to have as far as education and also dif what different levels of the um, food service team at a school district have to have as far as annual training uh, in hours per year. So we're looking at that. We already have plans in place. Uh, some equipment upgrades we had this year. We had a new freezer installed at the beginning of the year at the high school. This has helped us to uh, keep that USDA commodity food separate. So 
as I said before, the high school not on the school lunch program, we can't use USDA commodities. So we've been able to keep those things separate uh, as we need to. The other thing we had was a new uh, computer system for point of sale. Uh, this has allowed our lines to be faster. We have less technical difficulties. It's really been a nice year in terms of being quiet with our computer system. So that's been a really good positive thing for us. Uh, what we have upcoming are kitchen facility renovations, which I think will get talked about in the next presentation. Uh, Ellesmere and Hamagrail Elementary Schools and the middle school will be getting um, overhauls, basically brand new kitchens. So we're very, very excited. They need this a lot. Our Ellesmere kitchen has a stove that looks like it's from World War II era. I mean, it's pretty, it's pretty old. Um, and some of them aren't even working, you know, they don't even get up to temp. So we're really excited to have some working equipment for our staff. Uh, other positive developments, real quick, I'll try to braze over these, but I think these are really important things to touch on. Um, I went into a Glenmont third grade class, Mrs. Bennett's class. The students had wrote a persuasive uh, argument for a project and they chose to write it on our personal pizzas. They thought they had too much sauce. The, our, it was adorable, it was awesome. And so I, I, um, we're working on right now finding a way to send this to in a letter format to the manufacturer and get some feedback uh, from them and maybe possibly a change that we can let the kids know, like, hey, you did really make an impact. It, they did, the kids did a great job. So getting into the classroom, they also gave tons of great feedback for our menu, so it was really good. Uh, we've been working at the high school with um, Sydney's Cycling Sauce. Uh, they've been using the high school um, kitchen to get their project started, which has been really awesome to see them. Some of my staff have gotten to interact with them and do some teaching, have some opportunity for that. Um, our high school art students have done, designed, and did chalk on our coffee shop menu board in the high school cafeteria. Also at Glenmont, uh, students have taken initiative to every day there's a couple students that come down and draw the menu board a teacher comes down and lets them do that so they've been getting involved um, at the middle school we have uh, students in the health and cooking class that did some my plate bulletin boards to teach kids about healthy eating right next to where they get go through the lunch line and we're also been working with the school gardens and the farmers market we're going to go to the farmers market this summer and talk about school meals and as well as healthy eating. Um, the Healthy Kids Committee, I've been to quite a few, well, two of their meetings, and we've also been a part of Healthy Kids Week. We had a recipe contest, and two of the recipe winners are gonna be, their recipes are gonna be featured um, in a week on our menu. Uh, we also had, uh, they had a movie screening, and we, I was a panelist on it, so trying to just get involved, get out there, and then uh, Kindergarten 101 night, this was pretty exciting. Uh, this is the second year they've done it. Uh, a group of our administrative team uh, invites kindergarten parents to come to a school and get to know what, what they're gonna be getting involved with as far as kindergarten and what to expect. Um, this is the first year that we've gone. I made the initiative to go and, and make sure that we were there so that we'd be represented and also uh, be able to give information to parents. It was really positive. We were super busy i mean between us and transportation i think we were we were just super busy all it was hard to get to answer everybody's questions and to talk to everybody that was there um, lastly regents week i'm super excited about this uh, we have had during regents week it's been tough because the cafeteria has been used as a testing site and we've really underutilized the staff that we have on that day because we don't um, the kids just don't have access to get into utilize our service. So uh, I have to send kudos to Scott Landry because he's allowing, he has been, made it happen so that the cafeteria will now be an open space so students can study there, they can stop, we can be open, they can get a drink, they can get a snack during their testing time. I mean, I think this is just gonna be great for the students to have a place to take a break, sit down, study, and then go back, you know, in between testing. So I think it's a great thing that um, we're going to have going on. So that's that. Okay, into the meat and potatoes here. I just want to talk about a few things that are key initiatives that I saw or uh, was told were things we wanted to take care of in this very first year. So first off, uh, inventory control. This was a big thing um, that I was told when I came on board needed to be looked at. Uh, we had had internal audit findings in the past that we needed to 
make some adjustments here. So when I came on, I saw that you know there wasn't a regular inventory uh, being taken or documented. We had a lot of disorganized storage, excess and lack of stock, um, and that led to you know not having what we needed when we needed it, or having too much when we don't didn't need it. Uh, so I'm looking at. Uh, I was looking at a bunch of ways and I've just brought in, we're now doing monthly inventories. Uh, these monthly inventories aren't perpetual, but after I met with the internal auditor, he says, you know, perpetual inventory is the gold standard. So that's, you know, what we want to aim for. But this monthly inventory tool that you're using is adequate. It's doing what we need to do. It's tracking. I can tell you don't have too much going on. So it's, it's meeting the need of what we need to be doing. Uh, we have new production sheets, which the staff have been getting used to partly due to the new regulations, but partly due to knowing how much we are producing today so we can forecast what we need to have for tomorrow. Um, working on minimum and maximum order points, this is a lot of staff training. I am making sure that staff know when we need to reorder something. Um, I'm not ordering everything for the entire department, so staff need to know when it's appropriate to order more or <coughs> when we need to order and they need to have that information. So we're working on it as a team to figure all of that out. Um, maximizing our storage, we've had some issues at some of the buildings with having enough room for things, for our food and supplies. So we're looking at ways to uh, make it more efficient to store what we need to store. And then the Capital Region BOCES bids. So we participate in these bids um, for food, supplies, uh, snacks, milk, and these bids um, are in need of some updating, so I've been working really closely uh, and a lot with the BOCES bid group to try to get things better for all of our food service directors. We're one of the larger uh, school districts that participates in this bid, so I will be looking next year at if it makes sense to stay with them because we may be uh, benefiting other school districts but not getting quite the benefit that we should be getting out of, out of it. So I'll be looking at this next year. Um, we are going to stick with the BOCES bids in the 15-16 school year at this point because it makes sense. Um, but I'll be looking at that. Uh, one big win with them was that we had a six-month food and supply bid, which was a lot of legwork for school food service directors. And also, if you think about, um, it, it changed over in January, so sometimes we would have a product for example, and this sounds simple, but it really does impact our, our, uh, our counts with the students. Say we have a chicken nugget for the first six months, and then six months comes along, and in January they're like, oh, well, the bid actually went to this other chicken nugget manufacturer. Then the, the kids are like, well, we don't like, that's different. We know, and they notice, and then they you know, don't want to participate with us because it's something different. So the one-year bid is going to help us tremendously in just having consistent product through the whole entire school year. Um, yeah, so that's on inventory control. A lot of good things happen in there. Um, management of student accounts. Uh, in August when I came on board, there was about $6,000 on credit uh, in the food service department. So this was like a whoa moment and like how we need to work on this. So uh, definitely did a lot of uh, technical assistance for the um, for staff, my staff, as well as uh, education out and outreach to students, parents, community members, teachers, our employees, to let them know, like, hey, we're going to enforce the borrowing policy that the district has adopted, <clears throat> and this is how we're going to do it. Um, so now, a real positive is that the average amount that we have at any given time that's on borrow or on credit with us is about $1,500, so that's a huge improvement. And that's probably even a high estimate. Um, so very good. And we have a process in place right now where we're looking at you know, ramping that down so that we're closing the end of the year with as, limit, as low amount of that borrow negative balance as possible. And it wasn't too bad. We didn't get too many nasty phone calls or anything. It was good. Um, Outreach and communication, this is an area I think we've done some work, but we definitely need to go further. Just looking at you know, how we're viewed. Um, I, I think our food service webpage isn't as user friendly as it could be, so we're going to be looking at that with communications. I'll be looking at that with communications this summer. We've already talked. 
Uh, and then a lot, some more menu outreach for the middle school and high school students. It, it is particularly hard to reach this age level with the menu, so trying to find some creative ways to do that using maybe social media or something they're already using in their day to day where it's just there and available to them, um, whether it's like their account where they keep their files for school or if they're in um, something that they're doing their homework in, whatever, We're just trying to keep that menu there for them so they know and have the information of what we have to offer them during the school day. Uh, one thing I wanted to touch on is that we did do a lot to upgrade our menus. Our menus were very uh, uh, <laughs> so, <laughs> you said it. They were they were, they weren't so colorful. They were pretty basic. Uh, a little bit hard to understand what was going to be <coughs> served that day. So we did a lot of work, and this is an example of an elementary school menu in May. So as you can see, there's lots of color. There's lots of information. It's fairly simple. Um, you have prices. So and we're just consistently looking at this and trying to get also feedback from parents and students on to make sure that this is um, getting the information out to them as we would like them to. Um, moving on to menus. So our menus have definitely had some changes. Uh, we have a menu planning database which we use and that is used to uh, make sure that we're following the nutrition guidelines. It's also what I use to communicate the menu to all of the schools, kitchens who are preparing the meals and serving the meals. It's how they know what to prepare, how much of it to serve. And um, so that has been updated for K-8. The high school program is still not in that. We'll be working on that in the future. Uh, just looking at continual assessment of the menu uh, going forward, we've had a lot of uh, good feedback. We've tried some things that haven't been that great. Just always kind of looking at what's working and what's not. It's a constant thing. Looking at uh, methods for feedback too. So I've been brainstorming ways we can get more feedback because uh, it's not as easy to get feedback sometimes on what we're doing. So I've been brainstorming ways we can do that in the next year. And then menu costing is a quite a big project I'll be working on as well. Yes. No, yes. I was going to <coughs> Alyssa, when you talk about menu planning because of the high school, are you mm -hmm. finding now, now that you've got eight months going behind you, like you have the database for the K through eight, right? Are you finding certain things that are really your hot sellers, and your, is that what you're talking about? Is trying to zero in on what the students really like and then trying to plan that menu so that you're always on the higher side instead of the unknown. Right. So the goal is to have those high days where we have high participation. The problem is is that those days often tend to be days like breakfast for lunch, chicken nuggets, pizza. So you have to balance those out with days that make your nutrition profile across the week and the month meet the nutrition standards. Does that Helpful. But you're getting more of a repertoire. To yes. And it's, it's twofold. You know, you have to have those days, but then you've got to work a little harder. We've done a lot of taste testing. For instance, we had a um, teriyaki chicken and rice day where we do a nice uh, steamed broccoli, a teriyaki sauce with pineapple juice, chicken, and, a, and brown rice. And so it sounds great, right? With kids, it takes them just a little bit to get used to it. So we've been putting it in taster cups at the elementary school and allowing kids to take the alternative option, but also take a sample. We've seen increases on those days, um, but we still are working on it. It takes time. So, yeah. Uh, okay, so moving on. I want to show you a picture, a couple of pictures, of our high school breakfast. So now I'm kind of moving into high school land. Uh, high school breakfast meal, this is what we're offering in the morning. It's served out of our coffee shop. We offer a few different options. We offer a bagel with topping. We offer a cereal cup, as you can, which is a variety. We just have cinnamon checks up there. Um, and it's in a larger, it's not in your traditional school bowl pack. It's a little more adult, um, a little more expensive as well. Uh, but it's what the kids, I get feedback that this is what they want. They want something that's more adult. They want something that's a little more um, 
you know, higher end, not, they don't want it to look like school lunch. So we're trying to get away from it looking like school lunch. So we're still, we still have some way to go, um, but they also can get an oatmeal cup. That's the other uh, entree option. And we're looking at some other on options too. Why I want to show you this is because I would like to, um, you know, this, this is a more expensive meal. And right now our price for breakfast is $2 at both the middle school and the high school. And the difference really between what we're serving at the middle school at $2 and what we're serving at the high school, I mean, for example, the bagel we serve at the middle school is a, a little whole grain bagel in a pack that's two ounces. This bagel is probably about five or six ounces. Um, and it comes ready with the topping on it, whereas at the middle school they get a little cream cheese cup. I mean, it just, this is a much, you know, higher end thing. So I have a recommendation at high school um, to increase the breakfast price from 2 to 250 The middle school price would stay at $2. Uh, and all other meal prices, I think, at this point should stay the same. Uh, got some information from a, um, another school business officer who collected some numbers on uh, meal prices in the area were on the high end of that. So I think at this point it would be n not a good decision to increase prices because I think it would just make our, our participation, it would affect our participation badly. Um, and then the um, other thing, so no price increases at this time. And then we'll be looking at the a la carte pricing. So I did look at the pricing for a la carte when we updated for Smart Snacks, but I want to look at the high schools as well. We'll be reviewing all of it. Um, what else we're doing? So I already said separation of the financial records we'll be working on for next year, focusing on nutrition op nutritious options. So even though we're off the program, we still serve nutritious things. You come into our high school kitchen at any day into the cafeteria, you're going to see a salad bar, you're going to see soup, you're going to see sandwiches and subs. You're going to see um, Tuesdays we always have a um, taco themed menu where it's kind of build your own and you can do black beans or refried beans, chicken or beef. Uh, we tried to make as many options for the students as we can to meet as many um, dietary restrictions or preferences. Um, I have some goals for next year for the high school. I'd like to increase the AM grab and go options just because students, you know, without a lunch period, we're trying to get those kids to participate with us in some way. Also get them some food to charge up for their day so they're ready for whatever's, whatever they've got going on. Um, we're looking at consolidating condiments. I think there's money to be saved here. It seems silly, but you can save a lot of money if you get your condiments in order. And then simplifying the pricing and the meal options, looking at, uh, you know, my goal is to s have, I explained this today, I just want to have someone who, it's their first day of school, and they come into the high school cafeteria, and by looking at the signs and the information, they know exactly what they can get and what it's going to cost and what they need to do to come to the cash register and, and get what they need. So we want, that's our end goal. Um, some numbers at the high school, our average daily sales are definitely up. Um, meal sales are up, snack and a la carte are trending the same, the coffee shop is up, and our after school program, which is only in its second year, is up. Um, keep in mind the numbers there are only through May 22nd, so, uh, but there's still a great, a good increase there. Our after school program has really become successful this year. The kids are pretty excited about it. And then just some pictures of what we're serving. Um, buffalo chicken wrap is the first one on the top. And we have our homemade pizza, which our cook makes every Friday. Uh, chicken enchiladas that we make from scratch. And I just want to give a thank you too to the team. All these, all these gals and guys have been working very hard this year. Um, looking at some trending on our lunch numbers. So now we'll get into uh, the numbers. Uh, trending on lunch ADP, we're still trending down at the elementary school, elementary and middle school. I think still due to uh, a price increase in the past as well as the new m menu pattern. So we're still recovering from that. I do expect that to go up soon. We're going to be, I'm going to be working a lot on the middle school next year to try to get participation up there. Um, the high school, as you can see, is trending back up. So this is a good sign. This means that things are going well at the high school. I don't think it's it's evidence that whatever we're doing is trending in the right direction. And then looking at our K-8 a la carte sales, so everything other than meals in dollars per day here. So trying to keep 
everything on level playing field, uh, we can see that the elementary um, K through eight, you know, has been pretty stable. Um, middle school has been slightly on the rise. So this is really good. I just want to make note that we had smart snacks and a lot of schools have had negative impacts with their a la carte programs and we've stayed constant. So that's a good thing. Yeah. I see enrollment numbers up too. I mean, that's you have to kind of take that into pace because I think our enrollment numbers have gone down at the elementary level. So it, it may actually not be as bad of a dip as you're thinking because that's true. Yeah. No, that's a very good point. Yeah. So if enrollment's down, that's definitely a factor. Mm -hmm. Um, so looking at comparative revenues uh, for the last two years and projected for this year, keep in mind projecteds are uh, actual through end of April and uh, projected for May and June. So our projecteds are looking like $1,170,000 for this year. Uh, that's trending upward, as you can see from the past years. Uh, our expenditures we're projecting, and in the same chart, we're projecting 1,244,000 and change. Um, this is also trending upward. So in summary, uh, just to look at the overall picture, because this is really what we're looking at, um, we look at the 12-13 school year, uh, $105,000 net loss. Uh, a 2000 in the 1314 an $87,000 net loss and now we're projecting for this year um, a 71 uh, so it's trending in the right direction we're getting there um, and as you'll see here in the recommended budget we're looking at um, a little bit better picture in the 1516 school year than even than what we have uh, this year so looking at um, some increases projected in some of our sales items here on the revenue side for the budget for next year. Uh, also looking at increases in salaries and employee benefits for next year. So we will be doing our best to cover those. And what we're projecting is um, this year a, a uh, needed transfer from the general fund of about $70,000 and in the 15-16 school year a needed transfer of $55,000. So one of the administrative recommendations I have is to uh, look at approving a transfer um, from the general fund not to exceed the combined total of those two to cover our loss in this year and our potential or anticipated loss for next year. Um, so, and then to recap, the breakfast price increase is another thing I'd like to see approved. And then just continuing to keep that high school out of the school lunch program. I think we're making headway with the program and I will be reassessing um, every year to see whether or not it makes sense to go back. But at this time, I think it's good to stay off. We're having good success. So. And if I can inform the board on this slide, normally we would go to a year to year budget transfer. But what happens is we have we know we're going to have some surplus at the end of this year and we're always reacting after the fact so when judy and i sat down and talked and then talked to Alyssa, we really wanted to try to get ahead of it and it also sets the goal that the loss projection right now is about 55 that's what we're shooting for and that way at the end of next year that's already in the budget and ready, but then you can deal with the next year's projection as well, so that now you're more one year ahead instead of at the time, with the goal that that should sort of decrease over time. One yeah. of the big things is, is if by chance it's also twofold. If Alyssa is able to come in at forty thousand dollars, now their fund balance goes from about three thousand or twenty-five hundred that extra 10 so that they have some tools to start properly getting their budget in shape to where they should address it or at least at the end of the year we have the money in there and if we did not have any surplus at the end you would see where we would be operating in a negative so this is more a proactive attempt to try to now get out in front of the issue instead of just reacting at the end yeah. so we wanted to bring that to you 
as one of our uh, recommendations. But the goal should still be zero. You know, well, yeah, yeah. I mean, black. but we're not it's cutting 100,000 right. in a year. Right. Yes. Well, what, what is our input of the um, free and reduced lunches at the high school? Like how much do we I think we, it was around 15,000 last year, if I so recall. So not that much. Yes. For how much for the free and reduced? Yeah, it's yeah. about between 15 and 20, I think. And so we should definitely be putting some in. I wouldn't say go yeah. to a zero. But. And that is, that is in the budget already because okay. we mm -hmm. budget for that. So this is solely just taking on the profit and loss at the end of the year. Okay. And we're finally heading in the right direction that I'd rather give her the tool and the goal to shoot for. And then, you know, if she could wipe it out and, and do exactly what you said, get it to zero, now her fund balance like next year would already be at 57,000 at least it helps her in future for planning because I know yeah. when I came in I think the fund balance was like 101,000 but it's just been taking hit after hit and you can't keep adding right. to the price of the meals. Yeah. And there are a lot of uh, tools uh, Lynn I just wanted to touch on the fact that yes we want to get back to that in the black um, we have a lot of tools left uh, it just it, it's going to take time there's a lot of cleanup to do there's a lot of Re strategizing and restructuring that has to happen to get us back to that point. Um, it's it, it's not just simply a matter of well, we have to get more sales because they, we have to really look hard at what we're doing as a department and um, figure out what changes we need to make. So I'm looking at both ways to save money and ways to make money um, all the time. <laughs> um. Um, just a couple things. Yeah. Uh, first, you are a breath of fresh air. So really appreciate the update yeah. and terrific job. I love your energy. I love your vision. I think we're on the right track. So, um, and I, I would say I have a fourth grader at Hammergrill, so I noticed right away when you came on board there were quick changes to that menu and they're great changes and they're exactly the kind of thing we need to do so and i love the little taster ideas you know yeah. you borrow it from the chinese food place in the mall which the kids go right to the food court and the free little teriyaki chicken so yeah you're the, obviously a smart woman if you know the, that the word free has a magical uh, effect <laughs> on does. children even if they don't like it they want it they want yeah. it yeah they go right free? over there and they get that it's gross the cherry at the mall it is anyway it's really yeah you yeah, know it's yeah. not even good chicken but they love it yeah um and they do the same at the annie's pretzel place they also mm -hmm. have if you want to know where the free stuff is go with your teenager to, to the food yes, court <laughs> um, just a quick um, a quick observation that I'm wondering if you can put on your kind of to-do list. Yeah. Um, and I noticed it. I can't remember if it was in the um, extra material, but mm -hmm. I think an untapped area, and we've talked about this, is in, and I saw it in there, catering sales. Yes. Um, I think a lot of these sports teams, especially mm -hmm. the yes. winter sports that are in this building, are ordering pizzas before their meat. They're selling pizzas. If we can capture that, I think you're clearly the person to do it because you know what kids like and you're you're devising menus and devising strategies to get them to to eat it um, mm -hmm. so if you can put that on your list to do more of maybe even start planning next year to do a little yeah. bit more of the um, catering stuff but great job Thank yeah you of course and just to comment on that um, yeah catering menu is on my list and definitely those catering things like you're saying that are just really easy to do and we're already you know we're getting it from someone else but we could be doing it you right. know and my, my staff are more than willing to have extra time if they can make something you know so right. I'm always willing to connect those dots um, we'll be working on a menu and then working on getting that menu out to the people that need to see it so they know it's available I think that's been the disconnect it's right like, and yeah. the booster club uh, the BCAA uh, president is right here in the audience he will be the venue as well as the AD to get it to at least the athletic club we've, we've already done some business together <laughs> we're good yeah that's good no I'm sure you have but I think there's a lot more untapped yeah. Um, turf to kind of go in. Yeah, and I oh, think great. the good part about that is you can build your staffing into the cost, yeah. so it's not a drain on the numbers that you're seeing, but could potentially be cost neutral and provide right. a profit opportunity where we haven't necessarily explored it. Right. Yeah. And having been at a lot of sporting events and had only the option of pizza, it would be nice to have subs or just something even. Something I, other I know than a lot pizza. of parents would 
go for something a bit. How dare you? No, <laughs> no. You pizza is like pizza done. But, um, <laughs> but you know, some subs would be. I think would be a hot item. The other I thing think is. So too. Do you know how many of those after school sales go to athletes? I, I know. I thought we had some great hope that um, some of the athletes yeah. trying to get something before the practice. A lot. The okay. amount of athletic equipment I see come through from two okay. fifteen to three is a lot. And <laughs> so if yes. I can say on Alyssa's behalf as well as the staff. I think yeah. when we first put this in almost a year and a half ago, in the middle of the year, we were doing about 110 to $125 right. dollars yeah. a day in business. I know they have a tote board down there that they try to outsell each day. I think they're up in the 399, 399 the 300 mm -hmm. Avenue. So that's something that they've expanded right. tremendously. So. Right. Yeah, the, and the staff really like, they'll go the extra mile for the sale after school. I, it's just, it's good. It's good uh, morale builder. Yeah, well, it's a good win-win. Win for the athlete, win for the win district. For the, so. Yes, exactly. Yep. And yeah. I'm expecting oh. that this is probably the quickest passing year in Elisa's entire life. She's been, <laughs> I want to offer her my thanks. She has worked so hard for the improvement of this food service yeah. program. She has gotten out into all of the buildings and has worked so closely with the principals and clearly has a passion for putting nutritious options out there and has the technical skills to really run a, a top-notch program. So my thanks as well for your efforts. So I have a, no. um, the yeah. community, the, the feedback I get is that the food program, the improvement in the quality of the food is fabulous. So everybody that I speak to is really happy with that. That's good. The question I have for you is I'm looking at the lunch breakfast where last year's actual was 421,000 and the projected for this year is 396,000. So we're looking at a Slide. deficit about um, Let I don't me know. 18, 17. Okay. Um, so th there's a decrease I think of about 26,000 over last year. And then the projected for next year, which is on slide 21, yep. is 431,000, which is an increase of 35,000 um, from the projected. So I, I'm wondering, are we just looking at making up that difference with the increase in the breakfast cost? It's a two-part question. Mm -hmm. And yeah, why was you. there a decrease from last year, a significant just, decrease? Okay, so first off, I wanna say that my projections tend to be conservative. Um, so we'll see how the end of the year actually turns out. Keep in mind that May and June are still yet to be completed. Okay, they're just projections. Um, the other thing is, is that I think we have a lot of room to improve at the elementary and middle school, and that's gonna be my main focus next year. And I do think we're gonna see increased sales if we can do those improvements. So I, my hope is that yes, we do see a market increase in our sales. But do we? But do we know why it kind of ticked down? Goes down. This year? Well, if or you, I know it's projected. Yes. How, um, well, if you look at what we've been doing in terms of sales at elementary and middle school, so if we go back to the slide where we're looking at um, the lunch ADP, our our lunch and is trending. What we're selling at the elementary and middle school is kind of trending down. So um, still and has been so we're, we'll, we will be combating that still um, and like I said that's due to I, I believe I see two things when I look at the trends is when we increase the prices and when we had healthy hunger free kids come into effect so all schools are battling this the same it takes a little while uh, and it, start, it trends down and then we hope it'll come back up and we work hard to try to make the menu meet regs but also keep participation in the positive. So. I was just looking at it because I'm just a little worried with if we don't meet those goals for next year with the increase in salaries, we might have the same type of deficit we've been looking at. And yeah. as Lynn stated, our goal is zero, so we wanna definitely move it, move the needle. Right, yeah. And, and our goal is to do that this too. throughout the year and yeah. we brainstorm on these ideas that would be the best way to address what we're seeing in the numbers. So um, it's not a static program that we lock it in right, right. on the, the start of the school year in September. So we'll right. monitor it and yeah. adjust and the, as we need to. And there are so many things, like, I'll just say what, like what Judy said, there's so many things that impact it. You know, the cost of food can change. Right now we've got, mm -hmm. I, my email is filled with 
avian flu stuff because all of the price of chicken and turkey is going up and I'm not going to get chicken and turkey from the US from the federal government next year likely so we've got to deal with that and so there's all these things that end up impacting um, what we're doing um, sometimes positively sometimes negatively in the financial picture so yeah. are you able yeah. to use anything from the, um, the like the middle school garden in the Springtime yeah. now and then in the fall. Actually, we've been getting lettuce from the high school garden. Um, a couple times we've had lettuce, and it is kind of a bear to wash. It was pretty dirty, <laughs> but we did well. get it washed, and we used it at all of our sites. Actually, we had enough lettuce from the high school garden to give to all our elementary schools and at our high school. So yeah, and middle schools produce too. Middle school's been using a lot of produce. Well, at least you know it's pet. Um, Pesticide fresh. free, free. <laughs> yeah. fresh, right. for sure. Yeah, yeah. definitely. <laughs> yes. Um, if you were going to tell us your biggest challenge, would it be food? Would it be? I mean, what what do you see as the biggest challenge you have in sort of delivering a product that students will eat? That's a difficult question. Um, I think I will say right now at this moment in time it's procurement and figuring out you know how to work the bids to get the product that we want to have that's high quality that is the right price point that meets what the kids like and also what we are set up to prepare so you know really that's why I say I've been working a lot with our bid group because that's where that can change mm -hmm. um, so I think that is the biggest thing now is we're locked into some of these products and they may not be the product we want to use but they're the product we're locked into so yeah those are definite challenges but we'll keep looking at it keep working on it yeah i also want to thank you for a great job yeah, yeah. it is really very refreshing when it ditto what joanne said well good and, I'm glad. Uh, and hopefully i was looking at the students in the back here and wondering if you if you guys participate have you seen a change or an improvement in the um, cafeteria? They probably like the BC Bowl. That way I see, I see a nod. What's the BC Bowl? What's, what's the BC Bowl? It was today's lunch. It was today's lunch. It was, it's pretty popular. It's, I can't say it's the healthiest thing, but it's all right. It's um, okay. All right. That, now we're not going to. Uh, let's see. It's, it's mashed potatoes, gravy, corn, and uh, chicken. It's a popcorn chicken, all in a bowl together. The kids, <coughs> they love it. <laughs> but we always serve it with like salad or something healthy. So. <laughs> yes, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> do you cater private parties? Would you like graduation? I mean, are you set up to do that? Or would that be something down the road? That would be something down the road. Okay. It'd have to I don't have think some your son's going to go for that. I know. <laughs> you don't know. He doesn't have to know. I just <laughs> catered it. But yeah, right. We did cater. I think someone was uh, leaving the district today, and we did cater kind of like a staff lunch in the, uh, the staff room today in the high school. So that was kind of fun. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Um, any other questions? Are we all set? No, I, too, just yeah. want to say I think you're doing a great job. Yeah. And um, I'm not really overly, I mean, I should be concerned about the deficit a little bit, but I'm just happy that kids are eating lunches and eating healthier lunches. And I know that we, when we raised those, you know, increased those prices a few years ago, I think we lost a lot of people. Um, yeah. So I'd be really against even trying to raise the prices to try and compensate for that. But. But it's really been exciting to walk into the cafeteria here in the high school. The room is packed with kids. We have the donated picnic tables. The kids are sitting outside now that the weather is nicer. Mm -hmm. You have the area for the upperclassmen in the back of the cafeteria. They have the TV monitors up there. So you can really kind of feel this excitement about lunch. And more than just it's not in class, you're in the cafeteria and you're really interacting with your kids or your fellow students and you're getting some, some good food. So it's a very visible improvement to me. Something I, I was thinking of as you were presenting is in terms of trying to get the, the uh, students to buy in. Yeah. And I think the samples is a, is a great idea, but maybe do like a coupon or something, you know, 50 cents off a, a lunch or something to put it in with the kindergartners when they first start or something and yeah, try to get them tied in and maybe even a freshman packet or something. Yeah. Well, um, one thing I, th I had thought about, this is, was an idea of mine, which I don't know if we're going to go for or not, but one thing would be doing, you know, a day of 
like a starter day, like the first day of school might be a day where we try to feed all, we try to, you know, do a free lunch day. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. This was just an idea. We don't have to do this. <laughs> but if we did, you know, it might get some, mm -hmm. always trying to hit, try to get those kids who never come to lunch okay. to feel comfortable coming through the lunch line because mm -hmm. that's one of the biggest barriers is they are afraid, especially at the K-5 level. Mm -hmm. So if you can do, you know, a day where you don't have to worry about money today, you just come and figure it out, and then, um, you know, after that, they'd be over. So it's definitely a lot of opportunity for ideas in that same vein. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's Actually, a good idea. communicate more with parents about that, because I don't think, especially if they're kindergarten, first grade, they're not really thinking about the money so much. Right. So parents would have to yeah, be informed so they can, the, to on encourage my school parents to online. have yeah. kindergarten yeah. school. Well, that, right. yeah. the, that was why, yeah, yeah. That, yeah, that was why that kindergarten 101 night was so awesome. Some of these parents asked questions where, you, you know, they just don't know. And it was really mm. great that we were able to answer some of those questions. So they were ready to go. They're like, oh, in August, I'm going to get signed up. I'm going to get my My School Bucks account, and I'm going to put money on it, and the kid's going to eat the first week of school. So it's really good. Yeah. yeah. OK. Can I just ask, any of you students want to say anything about the school lunches? Any observations? It's delicious. <laughs> Free coupon. Get out, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> he wants one of those coupons the before the end of the year. Yeah. You definitely go white on that personal pan pizza. <laughs> That's the one everybody says. Yeah. Awesome. Okay. Thank That's you very great. much. Take care. Good job. Next, we'll have a presentation on a construction update. Greg? Did you bring us any samples, Greg? No. <laughs> it's going to be a really tough act to follow. Thanks a lot. Um, any of the o &M trainings that we do have, though, for a couple years, we've been uh, uh, catering from police. So. so I'm Greg Nolte. I'm the director of facilities. I've been here over 15 years and have also yet to receive an eagle pin, so Tonight. maybe by retirement, that come? we'll see, so. Um, this is another construction update, and I know deep in my heart that when September comes in October, you are really going to miss these, okay? I know I've been up here a lot, so. Um, as usual, i uh, got some nice photos uh, to show you. Um, we are, um, Scott, about 75% complete. Um, we expect substantial completion and are shooting for it at basically the end of this summer, okay? So uh, we've been hounding the contractors to, to make sure that uh, all of this gets done and that they are substantially complete um, and just about out of here um, by the start of school. So uh, a lot has been going on. We've been picking away as, with as much as we can do now to lighten up our summer load. Um, at the high school, the pool has been shut down. Um, and you have this translucent panels uh, that replace the old spottied um, glass um, that was at the pool. Uh, we designed this in such a way to minimize glare, which was one of the main problems with the swimmers and people using the pool, which just the way the sun was. So this has helped quite a bit. And if you go by at night, um, it really looks kind of cool, especially when the lights are on. Um, our, our value, of course, is going to uh, be a lot better with these. Um, so that'll help retain the heat as well. Um, not part of the bond project, but we're working on this now because this project has to get done by the end of uh, this school year is our capital outlay, okay? And uh, we have another contractor in here working simultaneously with our, our bond contractors and they've been working on the soffits. You can see how hard this is. We had to drain the whole pool. Scaffolding is up on either sides to work on these soffits that basically are on either side. And there's some of the demolition. Uh, this is actually above the, uh, the diving boards. Uh, the track. Um, conditions had to be perfect, OK? We needed uh, humidity right. The wind couldn't be blown too much. The temperatures had to be increasing. And ever since the snow started melting uh, and the cold started coming in, 
we were we were we were watching all of these items okay and um, honestly it's been about a month uh, when we started spraying uh, the track you can see uh, all around uh, the plastic that had to be used to cover the gatehouse that uh, the bleachers um, we had to restrict parking in the faculty lot in the back um, bus uh, over transportation parking along Van Dyke uh, just to make sure that this overspray didn't get on any cars because that has happened in the past but not on this <laughs> or not in this district and you're also the first school to get your surface done this spring of any school in central new york i, I can tell you i've been on it it's good it feels nice it's still and it looks it looks real nice too and, and if i can say every six years it must be refurbished that's one of the issues from before that did not allow it to expand as well as once we fully open it we may want to put out some signs that say today tonight's walking lane is lane three not lane one where everybody's on because that also causes damage to the track over time so that's something i, I know bcaa can help out with the athletic department but i also know greg will now how do we keep people off the infield they right now there's some fences oh there, there is fencing yeah. no it, it's open though in general only in yeah they, they i mean you you can put a fence all the way around from what Greg's told me, and they'll still go on it. We put what's known as nuisance fencing up so that you can't have really what? Play. Uh, we don't want athletic competitions. We actually have three sections of fence going down, um, going about halfway in the field sporadically. Uh, we have signs on it. Um, the fencing has been removed. We've put the fencing back. The signs are back. Um, and for the most part, um, everybody's been... Um, respectful of this uh phys ed class has been out there using it quite a bit uh, i know our athletes have been out there using it uh the track at least mm -hmm. um the field can have foot traffic we just don't want athletic events yet because the sod just isn't isn't established yet you said we have signs do we have signs as you walk in yep we have signs all over uh, there, they must be and the, there when i use the facility okay so. all right we it's a constant whether or not they blow Some down get put up and they blow down or they get or taken people off. remove them you know we're there and you know we see it each day and we put them back up um we're actually mowing again tomorrow so uh, the fence will be put taken down and then put back up it's a little panoramic from the uh the press box doesn't really do it justice though um what is going to be real nice is our new musco lighting um it'll help illuminate um, the stadium field much better than the old lights that used to twist and we used to have dark spots in our end zones and stuff like that. But um, we actually had to do a, a burn, as they call it, of the lights. We had to have it on for... Four hours. Usually seven hours. What's kind of neat about these lights is they're monitored by Musco. They actually can tell you when a light's starting to go out, when one of the heads is starting to burn out. They can tell you if it's aligned. They can tell you if uh, the ground's been taken off, it's all from the manufacturer, from their headquarters. You're, you're hooked right into their system. So these are remotely monitored by a wireless system. It's pretty cool. Um, other work that we're, we've been picking away, the uh, chimney uh, here at the high school uh, had to be uh, reconstructed. Uh, that's, that's a whole new cap on that chimney. Um, the big pile of dirt that we, we saw all winter along um, basically was uh, sifted and screened and amended with uh, compost and other organics uh, and has been being spread on that center field. The work is still going on. Um, and in that center field, basically, we have this uh, V, um, a vertical drain that goes throughout the fields to help with any, uh, any drainage issues. Um, transportation. Uh, unfortunately, transportation doesn't shut down. Even in the summer times, they have runs. Um, so we've been working very closely with uh, uh, the director there and coming up with a plan to attack the, the site work um, here at transportation. Um, this actually started back in May where we started digging up this section. This is actually between the bus garage and the employee lot. Uh, in front of the bays that I just showed you, um, there's a 10-foot apron of concrete. This was another um, 
<laughs> detailed schedule that we had to work out with transportation because not all the bays have access out the back and we were gonna be shutting down a bay for close to 10 days. Well, they have a number of buses that they gotta maintain, so what was this gonna to mean to their, their, their mandatory schedule? So we worked it out with Cindy to, to basically break up three bays at a time and uh, uh, complete this, because uh, the concrete had to cure uh, strong enough in order to ride a bus over it. So we had bays about, I think it was about seven days that they were, that they were out. This is just the second pour. Uh, all, all of the pads have been placed right now. Uh, what you see is the stone on the lower part. That was where we had to dig down. We put in some new drainage, and that's all the, basically the sub-base for the paving work. Um, this is the beginning, um, and a lot's changed since this photograph of the new equipment storage shed over at my facility. I am hoping to move my office out here. Um, it's very nice. Um, drainage at uh, Glenmont. There's other drainage that we're going to be doing back near the, the, the uh, uh, playground, uh, but this is one that we could tackle now. Um, this is actually on the entrance as you're driving in on the left-hand side, so this work has been completed as well. Um, this was the list that we had last time. This is all the work going to happen during the summertime, or most of it. Um, as we mentioned earlier, we're doing kitchen re renovations at uh, middle school Hammer Girl Ellesmere. Uh, more floor tile abatement, high school in Ellesmere, um, window work here, uh, which we're going to hopefully start tackling um, about mid-June or so. We're trying to coordinate when rooms are not going to be available. Um, gym floors um, at Hammer Grill, Slingerlands, and Glenmont are going to be either replaced or refinished. Um, some more roofing work, a lot of masonry work um, uh, that's going to be happening at those schools as well. Okay, so I thought I'd just give you a brief overall of where do we stand right now with our overall project budget, okay, which is twenty million one eighty five two ninety nine. That number is ingrained in my mind because we can't spend any more than that, okay. <laughs> so um, we have a hard cost, cost construction, okay. These are actual all, this is actually all of the contracts, okay, and the change orders to date, okay, and, and basically I put in to date because this changes, okay. Whenever we have change, or, uh, change orders, that number increases or decreases. Um, the other thing that uh, we looked at uh, the past week uh, between uh, Scott Bullers from campus, our construction manager, uh, the business office, we looked at our budgets, okay? The soft side of our budget, which is what we call the incidental budget. This is everything from legal to bonding to testing to moving costs. <coughs> um, and we looked at where we are now with the project and where we're going, and we were able to reduce the soft cost budget about $200,000. All right, basically, and we took that $200,000 and basically moved it into contingency, which is, which is a good thing because we're not going to be spending it. So right now our contingency is about seven sixteen. All right, well, you've seen this slide before. Um, we spent um, right now about 46% of our contingency. Uh, uh, you have authorized about $488,000 uh, in uh, change orders. The contract allowance, these are monies built in the seven prime contracts. Um, we have about $200,000 that's dispersed within those uh, contracts. And we spent just about all of it. We have about $29,000 remaining. Okay, so with this remaining money, okay, uh, we have $716,000 remaining. Um, we have an issues log that we continually keep and have kept since the beginning of the project. We review with the facilities committee. Um, these are change orders that are in the works that we might want to consider that we know we're going to have to deal with. Um, um, currently, we're, uh, there, there's a couple items where um, we're looking at a, a potential redesign or issues with the stair tread replacement here at the high school. Um, at um, Glenmont, there was a storm drain that was supposed to be at this location. Well, it was 70 feet away, okay? So we're working with the site contractor to, we have to connect to it. That's going to be a cost to us. So um, uh, we're working with him to, to negotiate a price. So those are things that, that we're calling potential change orders. Uh, within that number is um, um, another application. We call it the, the Sandmaster application of the fenced field here at the high school, something that we're considering. Uh, we're not sure whether or not we are going to do it or not. We were hoping that we were going to have a rainy spring to assess our drainage situation and, and a test area that we did, but seeing that we were in the 
I think, second driest spring in, in, in our history, we haven't been able to assess it. So that, that $14,000 number is within this potential change order, okay? Um, two, two items I would like to talk to you tonight about um, is the JV softball sod um, is, is the first one. Uh, presently within uh, this project, um, I think in the next couple weeks, we'll be finishing up with the center fields um, at the high school here. And then basically the contractor goes over and starts the planned work at the JV softball field. And then about a month later after that, then <coughs> we'll, we'll, we'll go over to the varsity softball field and do the drainage work over there, okay? Within the bond, um, um, is, uh, the plan is just to seed those areas, okay? And in doing so, what that means is that for next spring, if we just seed both those areas that next spring, that we would not have a softball field here at the high school, okay? So one of the considerations that we've talked about was potentially sodding the JV field, which would give us one softball field <coughs> next spring. If we sod it, um, now we would have enough growth that we would allow or that, we, <coughs> that it would be okay to have uh, use of that field in the spring of 2016. All right, so um, I believe, and maybe now's the time, Len, if you want to come up and maybe just speak to um, the issues of not having any softball fields here. And why, why you would do the, the JV rather than varsity. That, that's... Um, um, the JV actually has the most work on it. The whole um, infield is actually lowered down. So actually the whole infield has to be raised up. And just with the way we have to come around with the drainage, uh, we're coming from the center fields and kind of coming around. It's the next logical spot to go. Well, it also sounds like that's the work's further along in that field. So you could actually start that, right? Or the, the well, varsity field you're just starting to work on. Is that correct? Or? No, we haven't started any, any softball field work okay. yet. Um, okay. we, are, we are constrained by SWIP, okay, which means that we can only open up so much acreage of property. And uh, until we get grass spurting or um, uh, growing in that center area, I cannot start work on the, the varsity softball field. But the varsity softball field is the one in the worst shape, and, and that's the one planned for the most improvements. Yeah. And if I can add for Craig, the JV softball field, we have the field hockey field that's the farthest field out. This allows to get on quicker with field hockey as well. Even the following year where with grass, we'd most likely lose that as well. And I think that is what the AD is really pulling for. Because at first when this came up, because it wasn't part of the base scope, mm -hmm. I, I, I will tell you, I mean, I think the facility committee would say, I said, we're not doing this until we're sure we've got the money, and I understand, but we were going to lose the fields no matter what for one year. It just would have been this year. As we've talked about it more, it makes sense with what um, Len as well as Greg is looking at for the best situation going forward for the program as long as we have the funds. Which, which is the JV um, softball field? Is it the, the one, one closest on to Stewart's? Going down. Oh, to Stewart. Oh, yeah, okay. the, the varsity area. field is, is right next to um, the parking lot, the front okay. parking lot. And, and actually, the JV field is getting a fence. Did you find out that or not? Yes. Um, so both softball fields like are new getting field. new backstops yeah. as part of the bond. Okay. 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 And just to clarify, if we sod the JV softball field, that, that would not be able to be used for this fall's field hockey. Right. Okay. It just won't have enough time to establish, so. Basically, the, the reason why the sod on that JV softball field is so vital is because we really need to have one operable softball field on the high school <laughs> campus. We have still four different softball teams <clears throat> in the district. Greg and I have spoken several times and we're gonna be planning also getting our softball field at the middle school operable for our two lower level programs. With those four teams and the way that the Spurtman Council schedule works out, we can have, we can get by for the spring having, having the one field at the, at the high school, JV Varsity would share that field and their schedule rotates and then the two sub varsity, sub JV teams would really be located out of the middle school with that same plan in mind. As we look to that following fall, 
as Greg has mentioned, field hockey is also going to be a very key issue. We have three levels of field hockey. Field hockey numbers are growing. So between the junior var uh, varsity, junior varsity, and the modified field hockey, we are going to need two fields there. This will allow us to, to be ready for that fall of 16 for field hockey. So JV, it's, it's JV softball as we look to spring of, of 16, as well as field hockey for fall of 16. So that's why having that, that quicker growth and having the roots take hold will, will greatly benefit us, having those facilities at our uh, disposal uh, on campus. So, just, just wanted to say that the facilities committee did discuss this at the last meeting and decided to table that change order because we really wanted to get some input from the board because it's a sizable expenditure. Um, so we're meeting again next Tuesday, so we wanted to get your input on whether you thought it was worth doing. Um, I guess my feeling is, you know, this whole project has been so disruptive for all the, and I think all the teams have kind of managed and you guys have done a really good job with the schedule. If we can, if we have, you know, some money and we can do something that kind of gets us in a better position for future seasons, you know, one season quicker, I, I mean, I'm in full support. I'm also assuming that sod is just a better quality field than the seed. Maybe that's a false assumption. It it's a more mature it's field. It grows faster. Than the seed. Sorry. Right. No, I know it grows faster, but is there any kind of material difference with later on, you know, the quality of the um, you know, of the field? Uh, I don't know if there's much difference. Um, mm -hmm. The contractor is responsible for providing us. Um, we actually approve a seed mix, okay? So we're not gonna allow certain things in that, okay? Right. They are required to um, fertilize and basically establish this turf for us. Um, uh, with either one, we're gonna have to water it a lot. Part of that is the responsibility of the contractor to do that. Um, um, and then afterwards, it'll be the responsibility of, of my department to, you know, maintain it as, as best as we can. And, you know, that'll be some future conversations we're going to yeah. have. But, Scott, do you think sod is a better? For a sod is better for a few reasons. First of all, if you see it, it's growing seed, where they crisscross it each way with their tillers and stuff, and then they mulch over it. But every time you get a really heavy downpour, you wash out a section, and you seed it, it never stays uniform up front, okay? Where you saw it, it's all the same. No right. matter what. It's gonna stay. You get a torrential rain, it's gonna stay. It'll just be wet. But with all the drainage you're putting underneath it, it'll still stay beautiful. Okay. There's a lot of benefits to the saw versus the seed. Okay, I'm convinced. Can we do the saw right after school starts? Or school ends? Uh, no, because they have to put in, they have to, again, um, build up the grades. I think, it, I think the schedule drainage. is somewhere around the end of July. Yeah, end of July, yeah. But would, it doesn't need the three growing seasons? It does. Well. How would they get on there in the spring? Well, hopefully we'll have a little bit of summer, okay. you know, of growing. We'll have fall to grow. Um, we, we talked about this with softball. You have three, you know, three girls in the outfield. How much are they going to rip it up? Okay. Um, uh, it'll have that as a growing season. Um, okay. we'll, we'll look at it. We'll assess it. Um, um, yeah, we'll, we'll do that all before we, we let play on it. Yeah, I, I think, Saad, I agree with Joanne. If we can get this done and get the kids on the field. And What's the time frame if you see versus the Saad? Um, as, uh, I would probably say more of a three growing season. So we would talk fall. 2015 spring uh, so we could probably use it fall fall of spring of 2017 hold on so you don't think we could do fall of 2006 no, so then would, the girls couldn't have any home games huh, right for two years yeah. Yeah. Well, what it means is uh, i think if they seeded it this year, mm -hmm. which were in the summer of 2015, and say they do it around July, 
takes 21 days for it to even sprout. So you don't even count that as a growing season. So you're really into the fall growing yeah. season. Then you're going to need the following spring. That's and two. Summer. And then you're even though you can count the summer, you can't really count the summer because if you have a drought in the summer, so then you have to use the fall. So before you would really get on it would be the spring of 17. And again, it's right. Was that yes. okay? And we're See, not taking a chance in the spring with the sod if they're ripping it up. Plain. Most likely That would not. be with my concern. Yeah. If we're only talking a few months for one season because they might not play on it in the spring, is it really that beneficial to do the sod if we don't think they can really play in the spring? I think we would um, I'm pretty also sure. save money down the road too if you're moving all these games yeah. to different places right. and different locations and getting buses or renting out That's other places. You know. Uh, I, if I may ask, answer Christine's question, um, if the sod was put down, we don't have to wait for the sprouting. So now you can you can probably capture most of the August, which is sort of like the summer, and then you move into the fall. So you kind of get one and a half, and then you get sort of the startup where they can practice. There's not much practice in the outfield. A lot of it's on the infield. But you can practice and grab most of that spring uh, even before they start playing, especially if we had the rainy season that we had this year where they played everything in about four weeks. Uh, so those are all good things. It's like the actual district stadium is, I believe, a little ahead of schedule where we were cautious about it, where I don't think they're as cautious about it now going into the next year. So it moved along a little quicker. So I think that's the benefit, that you, you really don't run the risk of not getting next spring. You, you really just run watching it until everything's all set. I guess I'd ask, what is the trade-off? If you had $46,000, what, what, what else would you do? Well, that actually is you know, a couple of slides. Alternates. I mean, that's, yeah. that's, no, the that's, that's the downside. Yeah, the flip side yeah, is. We need to hear what those alternates yeah. are, because that may be a higher priority. Yeah, there's 46, yeah, that's, that's 46, that's 46 coming up. Here. So. I think the other thing also to consider is um, um, the town was going to allow us to use it for games. Um, if we don't have any fields available, then I know that there'd be a lot more busing costs for practices every single day. And again, I don't have a number for that, yeah, but I mean, that would just eat away at. Yeah, that would be, I mean, if we were even talking about high school level, when we did speak with the town, we were unsure what was going to happen this spring with losing that second field at the high school. Uh, the town was gracious enough to work with us. We were only talking at that point eight or nine games because it was the modified and the freshman teams at that point. Now we're talking about varsity teams with a 21 game schedule that do require practice six days a week. Um, it could result in not only additional transportation costs of, of potentially if we were able to get line drive, um, that would impact the town of Bethlehem's programs, the youth programs quite a bit, the tomboys. Um, we may have to forfeit home games, you know, and it becomes a whole variety of, of chain reactions. But when we did talk with them this spring and they were great, it was really a very small amount of games at a lower level. So the, the, the goal of this conversation is just to present this to you. Um, we're not uh, presenting the change orders. We would do that um, at the June 17th uh, board meeting. So any other conversations on SOD? It, it would be helpful to revisit that after you just go over the, uh, the other alternates, just okay. because we're having a facilities committee between now and the next meeting, and it would be Three helpful seconds. to know sort of the will of the board. So. OK, the other item that um, we looked at um, and actually ended up rebidding was the middle school egress coming out of the basement. Um, the two stairs going down there are uh, horrendous to maintain. Um, we actually redesigned it a little bit uh, from when uh, this design went out um, at the time of bid, okay? Uh, we had four uh, applicants uh, or four bidders uh, pick up and we only had uh, one person bid. And that was actually the general contractor uh, that, that is doing um, uh, this project. Um, we were expecting bids at around anywhere from three to 350. 
um, and it came in at 342. Okay, so this is a big, this is a big change order for us, our, our biggest. Um, what we looked at was our remaining exposure as far as contingency and unforeseen. Okay, we have about five million dollars worth of work left to do. We usually like to maintain around five percent contingency. Five percent of about five million is about 250. So we are comfortable uh, with uh, recommending that we move forward um, um, with the middle school basement egress project. This would actually go probably into October um, because of the long lead items with the glass. Um, um, but the main structure it's, would pretty much be constructed during the summertime. So again, not looking for action. Uh, um, we would present this uh, at, the, at the next board meeting as a change order. Now, Greg, now are you talking about the front entrance, like to the pit, to the canteen, or whatever? A, you've, you've, you, you've, you've given us, I mean, we had a, we already saw a plan when we were you know, a, a the design. initial plan, yes. yes, yes. So this is actually, but if I you look at the I main entrance to the right, our, between the main design. entrance and the pool entrance, there's two stairs that right. go right. underground, okay? okay. Um, <laughs> they aren't protected, uh, and these go basically to the pit, where there's after school programs and other programs in there. So this kind of connects them both and creates a much safer structure to, to egress out of. It was, and I think to your point, being part of the bond, it was always an alternate part of the bond. Oh, okay. uh, but at that point, we would have had to accept it at that bid time. We did not because we had to make sure the budget was in right. That's what caused us to go out and have to rebid it at this point. I do believe you, next slide is a drawing of? No, actually. Can you I, go to that I, drawing real quick, just so that they can see it? Yeah, like, this is sort of a reversion of it because they they had it where it came out oh, sideways. I think, I think it's the one after the pie chart. Yeah, it is. How do I get out? Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, it's after the pie chart. Unless it's a different set of slides. Yeah, there it is. Yeah. So the main entrance is about right here. Actually, let me go back to. So the main entrance to the school is right here. There's one egress coming out right along the stairs here and another one kind of over here. So basically we would have some, call it a hallway along the front of the school and then come up and then out right here. Much better design, um, much, much more buildable, complete. Um, this is just a rendering, but uh, we, we arch it in such a way to match uh, the front of uh, the upper gym. There's actually some lattice in here to match the lattice uh, of up here. Um, the spacing is similar to the spacing there. Just a lot of neat architectural finishes here. And that will also have the front entrance done as well. The black draping will be gone. Yeah. And what is part, and, and you'll start seeing that in the next couple of weeks, is that we have lots of masonry work going on at the summertime um, at the middle school. The cloak of uh, um, uh, the middle school that we put up when Sandy Morley left um, um, will be removed and it'll be all repointed and, and actually rebuilt. Um, the chimney as well, you'll probably start seeing scaffolding next couple of weeks on the roof because uh, we're going to start picking away at that. Can, can, will kids be able to use or and staff in fact use the front entrance while yes. you're doing that? Yes, we're not impacting at all um, until school is done. Okay. Then during the summer program, there may be times that we'll close down the front entrance and have people come in behind the stage. So, but so this is the major change order, so that's why we needed to make sure uh, we discussed it and brought it to the board. It was something that we originally intended it's probably one of our highest priorities because it's one of those issues that has been long-standing an issue for the the building envelope with infiltration of water security uh, and just the general cleanup of the front of that building so similar to the middle school egress um, that was an alternate at time of bid these were all of the other alternates that we had and did not accept at time of bid okay um, and um, I won't go through these. I, I provided them for your, for your record. Um, you can see I already have the sand master in here that we talked about earlier. Um, Greg, are those in priority order? No. 
Yeah, I did. Yes. Yeah. You didn't know about that, but I did. Yeah, <laughs> yeah and again, um, yes. yes. Okay. Oh, they are? So is the site work at Eagle of the drainage and the bath? Like toilet. Yes, there's some uh, drain. There's some uh, drainage beyond um, the paved play area. I think as well, there was a section that we were expanding the paved um, uh, play area in the back as well. Um, as you come in um, on the left-hand side, there's a stone area uh, that we created that we would pave, and then there was uh, one other. Um, we were going to remove some curbing to help us with our snow operations. So, so is that's, that still that's a possibility. The what? To be an alternate. Okay. Yeah, I, I mean, again, the, anything that, that we do, um, we would have to either receive proposals or bid out, okay? Uh, you know, a lot of these are smaller items. Um, again, um, we're not looking for action on these. A lot of it, we're waiting to see how we end up, okay? Uh, with that 250000 if you approve those two changers that, that we talked about, of that two fifty, how much am I going to be using? Is there enough left to do anything? Um, again, I would like to spend every last... Penny just to get projects done. I just I'm familiar with that. Just knowing that there's not a lot of space with the water issues, yeah. with the kids playing in the playground, and uh, we would bring this back to uh, the board if if we end the project and we have a hundred grand to do projects with um, that. Okay. Thank you. So next meeting is when we would sod. And okay. the egress would okay. be, plus any other change orders that right. come up out of the 84,000. Okay. But my assumption with the fact that those you sort of put on the list as, were, as your priorities, those are your top two. And then this list would be the next phase of priorities, but these are not in priority order. No, they are in priority, no, they they are are. In priority okay. order okay. out of the 244,000 that the remains, except for that top one of 16,000, because that's already accounted for in the 84. Okay. We would look like, say everything went perfect and we've got 244,000 to address this issue. If you already look up there in priority order, the paving at the middle school, the site work at Eagle, the varsity baseball backstop, and the refinishing middle school upper floor gym, that comes right, out right. to like $189,000 or something. Well, then you've got about $50,000 left. Well, you might not be able to do the high school window. That would have to be in the next project. If you were able to right. just cleanly wrap it up, you'd go to the next one, which would be the JV baseball. Next year, I think Fix Greg. the toilet at Ellesmere. Well, <laughs> you could go down <laughs> there, but like the problem with that is there could be potential asbestos, which all of a sudden is an unknown. A lot of these would not necessarily have the unknown cost, which would okay. trick another change order. But like, if you look at the middle school elevator, I think that's potentially Greg's next capital outlay. Uh, so we're also using this as some of that as well. Okay, I got it. Thanks. And again, anything that we have not done, we're putting it on. Right now we're working on our building condition survey and our five-year <laughs> facilities plan and possibly a, another bond coming up. Um, but anything that we have not done that, it's, uh, that it has been identified, it's just we're just carrying it forward uh, to our next list. You have the we bleachers will be... on that list? Huh? Bleachers at the high school stadium field, you have that, there? Yep. that on the list? Okay. There's a lot of people telling us stuff to put on the list, <laughs> believe me. <laughs> we, I'll be happy to share the, the book with you. Um, <laughs> Anyone else, any questions for you? Mm -mm. Thank you, Greg. Thank you. So, so just for the facilities committee, are people leaning towards the sod in the middle school? I support the no, sod in the middle school it. and the... I mean, that's a recommendation. Our recommendation would be to do that, yes. Do both. Okay. Okay, you've already done. Uh, can we get through the rest of it before yeah, the 9 o'clock deadline? I think okay. so. We yeah, already passed seven. some of it already. Well, I know. <laughs> well I, I've got a um, recognition visitors. of visitors. At this time, the board has set, a, has set this time aside. For anyone who would like to address the board on an agenda item, anyone who would like to speak on an, an agenda item? No? Okay, moving on. We We've did number eight seven. and we did nine. We are now under on to number ten. Four pages. I'm under ten correspondence for action. It is recommended that the Board of Education approve the following correspondence action item A. So moved. Second. It's a first and a second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Any abstentions? That item carries. 
And now we would recognize any visitors who want to address the board on any non-agenda item. Being none? Okay, great. Uh, future meetings, uh, Wednesday, June 17th, we'll have another uh, Board of Education meeting. 6 p.m. is the anticipated uh, executive session. Uh, 6.30 that evening, we'll have a, a reception for retired staff. All, all staff to have uh, support staff, teachers, uh, anyone who has retired during the year uh, is welcome to come, and I, I hope they are able to make it that evening. We'd like to see them to congratulate them. And then with the 7 p.m. regular board meeting, uh, after that, our next Board of Education meeting will be our organizational meeting on Tuesday, July 7th, 6 p.m. anticipated executive session with the 7 p.m. start. Uh, in between now, the, the, those two board meetings too, we do have the moving up ceremony for the middle school, which is 25th. the 25th, Thursday the 25th here at the high school. Um, and then Friday the 26th, we will see all the seniors at graduation and we are all looking forward to that. So. Can I just say also on the, after the 17th, we're going out to dinner, anyone who can make it for the board and uh, yes. supports uh, administrative staff. Okay. Just so the, the board knows in this week's update as well, uh, we traditionally have that last week, sort of the bowling celebration to bring people together, whether it's the board, the elementary schools, we've moved it up to Janu June 11th, not January 11th. Uh, June 11th and uh, the PTAs have helped by donating $40 to provide some live entertainment, which will be Mr. DeAngelis from um, the middle school, and it will be down at Delmar Lanes uh, as well, and it's $15 per person that also uh, allows for some uh, hors, hors d'oeuvres and refreshments. Uh, in addition, it starts from 3.30 to 6.30 is about the time frame, but it has a tendency, it starts sort of like 3.30, picks up about 4, 4.30, wraps up about 6.30 to 7.30. Marvin's very good. It, it's a wonderful way uh, for the district to come together as well. So just look for that again, just work through Brittany. Uh, if you'd like to come out. Uh, last Each year we usually get about 100, but we're always competing with the end of the year, so that's one of the reasons why we moved it forward. Uh, I believe one year you did the hula contest, right? Oh, yeah, that yeah. first year. <laughs> Not a hula hooper, but. And, and I know the board did get an invite to that. Unfortunately, yeah. I know myself, I have a previous commitment that evening yeah. and can't make it. So if you can come out, I'll take care of it. Okay. Can I have a motion to adjourn? So move. First and second. And second. <laughs> All in favor? That's done. Aye. We are adjourned. Uh, PIG students, please come up and uh, we'll have sign out sheets for you up here and we can sign any documents you need for to sign. For the board. If